your D-Day jump. What do you remember about that? Can't forget it. D-Day? Holy mackerel, what a nightmare. The flak. The only reason you dodge the flak is you pull the riser and spill the air so you fall faster. So you, you, you dodge that flak. If you sit, hang up there, they're going to kill you. So you pull that and you fall like you're, there's no chute. And then you get about 50, 100 feet from the ground and let go, and it stops your descent enough to, you know, to land. But we were lucky. Hey, there were 48 of us and four came back. Warning, the frontline testimony you're about to hear is, at times, extremely graphic. The realities of war are often difficult, but it's vitally important that these stories are told and the lessons are learned. Your discretion is advised. Where did you go for basic training? Basic training was in, uh, where was it, my basic training? Uh, Camp Roberts. Near San Luis Obispo? Yeah. Camp Roberts, yeah. And it was there that you joined the paratroopers? No, I had to take basic training first there, uh -huh. and then I went to the paratroopers. I thought that was uh, more glamorous, more exciting, more... Uh, I, wanted to, I didn't want to fight and have some bomb blow me up. I want to fight the Germans man to man. I was a young man, you know. I heard that in Italy, you got buried alive. I did. What, can you talk to me about what happened? Well, there was a, an Italian garrison, a great big red brick building that the Italians had their soldiers uh, put in there. It was a barracks for the Italian soldiers. And when we took over that, we took over that building and we, we were there. I had a little bunk there and, you know, and then one, I think it was some Sunday morning, all of a sudden the building blew up and I was buried alive. This is it, you know, I was saying my prayers and I was like this, because the building went, you know, and I was buried just like this. And my buddies uncovered me eventually. And uh, I could hear, hear them, you know, and I'd yell. I could, you know, I couldn't move my mouth, but I could, you know, make noise. And eventually they uncovered me, and uh, I went to the hospital. I was on a stretcher, and I remember I was on a floor in the hall, and I threw up, and it was a lot of fun. There must have been a lot of layers of, what, concrete on top of you? Or what kind of material was it? Oh, red brick building. And it was uh, big, heavy walls. Mm the Italians made for their uh, soldiers. It was a barracks for the Italian soldiers. Did you become unconscious at any time, or you were, you were conscious the entire I was conscious, yeah. And you thought you were going to die in there? Why, sure. How long did it take them? <laughs> I didn't have my watch on, and if <laughs> I did, it, it, it felt like six months, but, <laughs> you know... I didn't think they'd ever get to me, but I could hear them digging, and eventually they got to me and covered a leg, and then uh, uh, went the rest of the body and got me, and I went to a hospital. They had me on a stretcher, and they didn't have room for me in a bed. They just stuck me in the hall. I remember I threw up in the hall uh, on the stretcher. What was the cause of the... What was my wife? What was the cause for the building to... Ex the, ca the cause of the explosion? Dynamite. Germans? Sure. We don't blow our own people up. <laughs> no, I know that, but they were that close to you guys? Yeah, it was a time bomb that they set that they tied it to one of those bunks in the basement. And after about 50 bunks went out, the thing was tied to one of those bunks and it blew everything up. So they put this time bomb as they were retreating? So it, it, they put the time bomb there as they were retreating? They, were, they retreated and left the time bomb behind. For you? Yeah, thanks. <laughs>
So, how long did it take you to recuperate after that? I don't remember, but it was months. You were heavily injured? For weeks, I don't remember. Do you remember what kind of injuries you had? I remember being in the hospital and then they didn't have room and they put us in a tent in the hospital. Mm. And the German Stukers would dive bomb us. Uh, even though we had big crosses out to tell them it was a hospital, they still bombed us. Yeah. So, this was in Italy. After that, did you go back to fight in Italy or was your next jump in D-Day? It wasn't D-Day ahead of this? No. I guess I went back back to the States. I'm trying to think. Take your time. No, Africa. I think we went from Africa. Yeah, Africa to Italy. Yeah, and then we went D-Day. And, uh, was no, but a, I'm saying, so after you got buried alive, yeah. did you uh, go back and fight in Italy, or your next jump was on D-Day? I don't remember. I don't remember. I didn't actually fight in, in Italy. I, uh, they had me in a hospital. I was all torn up. From the building falling? Yeah. Yeah, I had one leg It was bad. They look pretty good to me. Now, yeah. They healed. Only took 70 years. God bless them. So, I was in, I think one of them was in a cast for I don't know how long when I got, well, you know. So then you're shipped over to England. Yeah. What's happening in England? We were chasing all the girls. Besides that? Happening like what? We trained. Yeah, at first they gave us a little time off, you know, a couple of weeks or whatever it was. And then we're right, we had replacements come in. You know what replacements are? And uh, the replacements, we would try and teach them and we trained together and learned each other's habits and, and uh, they would learn our commands. And then we went back into combat. How do you guys treat the new guys coming in? How did what? How do you guys treat the replacements? How do we treat them? Uh, we tried to treat them good, but they were frightened, you know. When you dropped on Salerno Beach, do you remember the drop? Sure. What do you remember about it? I ended up in the hills. I mean, but was there a lot of Flack? Oh, yeah, the, the Italian, the, the, uh, the planes, our ships were in the harbor there. And they would try and blow them up. And they'd come by and drop all kinds of stuff, you know. So, but as you were dropping down on the parachute drop, I mean, was it, was it at night or was it during the day? I'm trying to think now. I think during the day. I think that was a day jump. I've forgotten. It could be at night. So, back to England, though. So, you guys are training in England. Is it obvious that you guys are going to invade France? I didn't hear that. Is it obvious that you guys are going to end up invading France? Oh, I, I didn't feel that way. I, I, we had no idea. We just took our commands from our... Our officers did what we had to do, but we had no idea where we'd end up. We just all hoped we'd live. Tell me about the D-Day jump. So I know before D-Day, there was a few other times that you guys were about to go over there, but they canceled last minute. Yeah, we practiced and practiced. And we had uh, jumps. Uh, we, we jumped uh, in, in the States and uh, we trained and uh, and when we jumped it was spooky. You don't know what you're going to land on. Water, land. How long does it usually take for how, you? How long? 
Well, when we jump, we jump as close to the land as we can, and it's it's uh, about two, three hundred feet is all it is from the plane to the ground, because they do that. We do that purposely so we don't hang in the air and get shot. It's bad enough to hang in the air that long, so we the planes would drop us low. And. Your D-Day jump, what do you remember about that? I can't forget it. D-Day? Holy mackerel, what a nightmare. D-Day jump. I'm trying to think. I, I can't think right now. I don't know. Where did we land D-Day in Salerno? No, where Normandy. Were we? Normandy. On the beach? I forgot now. I think it was the incident where you were stranded for like ten days. Uh, you I think I landed in a tree. You and two other guys, no food, no water in the field? Oh yeah, in the wheat field. Is that, was that D-Day? Yeah, that was after D-Day. And, and then we got wiped out, except for us. We hid in that wheat field. Uh, we killed a few Germans on the way, but then we were outnumbered and we got in the middle of a wheat field and just stayed right there. We had our rations and a canteen of water. We ran out of water and when it rained, we'd open our raincoat and catch some water in it. and put it in our canteen, and we survived. This was your D-Day jump, or this was? I think it was D-Day. I forgot which jump that was. So explain to me, you guys are hiding in a wheat field? Yeah. How are you hiding? In the wheat. Laying down? Yeah. We weren't standing up. <laughs> what would you do for food? We brought our own. The our rations? Own, our own rations. How long did you survive like this? I think it was five days. I've but, forgotten now. I may have it written all down somewhere, but I think it was five days. Let's see, D-Day was what date? June 6th. Two, did you say Tuesday? June 6th. 26th. June 6th. Oh, yeah, of course, June 6th. Yeah, June 6th. Oh, my God, what a date. How could I forget? June 6th was D-Day. I can't remember. That's fine. But we were lucky. Hey, there were 48 of us and four came back. Two were with me. Because you guys hit out in that field? Yeah, 48 went in and, and four came back and two were with me. I, Three guys. The other one was the commanding officer, and 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 some some French people hit him. But he'd have never made it. What do you remember on D-Day, in the jump into France? Is there anything that you remember about the flak? I mean, what was it like? Sure, I remember the flak. The only reason you dodged the flak is you pull the riser and spill the air so you fall faster. So you, you dodge that flak. If you sit, hang up there, they're going to kill you. So you pull that and you fall like you're, there's no chute. And then you get about 50, 100 feet from the ground and let go, and it stops your descent enough to, you know, to land. Explain to me when you're on the C-47, on the way to the drop zone. Yeah. What's going on in your head? In my head? That's a good question. I don't remember back that far, but I was always thinking about, did I bring the right equipment with me? And, and uh, you know, you're thinking about all, all of the right things, and you wonder what's going to happen, and you want to get out of the play. The flak's coming up, and and you want to jump and get going. And eventually they stand up 
and stand in the door. That was the command. Hook up. You take your your the parachute. Have a thing you hook up. When you jump, it would pull the chute open. You know how that worked? Yeah. So when they'd say stand in the door, you would shuffle up to the door, and then the command was go, and we'd all go. And uh, when you're floating in the air and they're shooting at you, it's no fun. So you grab the risers and spill the air so you go down faster and you don't get shot at. So uh, you do all you can to stay alive, five by five, and still alive. And you told me that uh, you jumped into Normandy with dynamite. Yeah, right? I was a demolition man. I trained with dynamite and how to blow up things and how much to use on a train and how much to use. So f f for, for D-Day, uh, what was the ideal situation? What was your objective on that day? I, I can't remember now. I think blow a bridge up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we blew it. I think we blew a bridge up. Now, for paratroopers, you guys are dropped into a zone, and after that, are you treated like regular infantrymen? Exactly. Exactly, infantrymen. That's all we were once we were on the ground. Yeah, no, you can't jump twice. <laughs> Can you talk to me about some of your most frightening experiences during World War II? Yeah, I think being buried alive was frightening. Because when you're buried alive and you don't realize what's going on, the building blew up and you're in it, and all of a sudden you're covered head to toe, and you say to yourself, what's the matter? I'm alive. And you start to struggle. And the more you struggle, the tighter it got. So you don't struggle anymore. If you try and move a little, it would, the earth or whatever was around you would tighten in. And, and it was no fun. <laughs> were you the only casualty or were there other guys that got hurt? Were there other, yeah, were other paratroopers with me? In the building? Sure. What other frightening experiences? What other frightening experiences? You got a couple hours? <laughs> I don't know. I can't think of them now, but we had plenty of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you go on a patrol, and uh, it was crazy the things that we did. And, and, and after a while, I thought I was nuts to join the paratroopers. The things that we did were unconscious. What do you mean? Well, uh, the, the missions that we had. The, uh, two men go down there, down the tracks, and uh, if they get shot at, come back. <laughs> you know, crazy things. What would you say some were some of the hardest things that you had to endure? Well, I think being without food and water and having a special impregnated uniform on that doesn't breathe and all you do is sweat and, and having no food, no water, uh, it was a little spooky. But out of 48 men, three of us made it, myself and two men. Did you think you would survive the war? Did I think I'd survive the war? Certain times I didn't, and certain times I did. It would depend on what was going on. Talk to me about the times that you didn't. Didn't think so? Well, in the middle of a wheat field with a bunch of Germans looking for you and shooting all over. They were looking for you guys. Well, they were shooting. They were shooting the hedgerows. You know what a hedgerow is? But we were in the middle of the hedgerows. I mean, nobody would go there. We were trying to get to a hedgerow, but the Germans came, so we dived in the wheat. And they didn't do anything there. They shot a little bit out there, but they didn't hit us. And so we were lucky. That's all. How did you finally escape that situation? How did I find what? Finally escape that situation. 
I don't understand what you're saying. How did you get out of the wheat field? Somebody came and dragged us out. We couldn't walk. We were so weak and so hungry and so thirsty, and we were so skinny. We were 48 men, and four came back. They all were in the wheat field? No. Oh, the wheat field, yeah. The, there were three of them with me. What do you remember about Operation Market Garden? The, drum, the, the, day, the daytime drop in Holland? In Holland, I remember I dropped in Holland. I jumped in Holland. What do you remember about it? I'm trying to think. Because that was a daytime drop. That's different than your other drop. Oh, yeah, it was scary. Uh, I don't know. We had some kind of skirmishes on the, when we jumped, and we were shooting the, the Germans, and they were shooting us, and eventually we made it up. I don't remember now. Is this going on now, this camera? Yeah. Do you want me to turn it off? Oh, I don't care. I just wondered. <laughs> You forget about it after a while. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you can sell all that. <laughs> can you talk to me about some of your most memorable instances in combat? Most memorable, I think. Uh, Besides the building. Yeah, that's the most memorable is uh, the being buried alive. Mm -hmm. uh, you had trouble breathing. And uh, eventually they dug me out, but that was, uh, I was said my prayers and never thought I'd see the daylight again. Uh, being buried alive is a frightening thing. And, and uh, big heavy bricks on you and dirt. And, and if you tried to move, it would get tighter. So I yeah, say, what am I doing, giving up? And I went like this. Oh, it just tightened all around me. So you don't want to try and move because it would just tighten. The, the dirt would move in, you know what I mean? And so we stayed. But out of 48 men, four came back out of that. That was the wheat field. Yeah. Uh, I want to know, sir, um, you mentioned that you guys got into skirmishes. I, I'm not hearing you. You mentioned that you guys got into skirmishes. I mentioned what? That you got into skirmishes. Skirmishes? Yeah. You being a demolitions man, you're also equipped with an M M1? Sure. Everybody had an M1. Can you talk to me about the kind of skirmishes that you remember fighting in? No, I don't. I don't remember. I remember I was hiding in a field and the Germans came and as soon as they got to the gate, I fired at them and ran and I got away. I was lucky. And I don't know if I hit any of them or not. Now you parachute and, and you see them in the plane when you jump and that's the last time you see them. I think 48 went in and four came back. Mm. And two were with me. What was your most interesting experience overseas? Uh, I think it was that girl I met. What girl? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Besides that. Uh, most interesting overseas, I mean the war or London? Or the war, the war. The war, well... I don't know, I guess we blew up a couple of trains that were going into Germany or somewhere. And uh, What do you remember about the Battle of the Bulge? I can't forget it. The Battle of the Bulge was the, um, where the Germans broke through, right? Yeah, well, what they did is they took the 82nd Airborne and took us on one side and the 80 and, and the, uh, 101st Airborne on the other side like that and cut the Germans in two. 
and I was there. I, I, they dumped me off in a truck, and we went with our gun and ammunition, you know. I think I captured somebody I forgot. What was the cold like? What was what? The cold? Closed. Cold. I don't hear you. It was cold. Oh, oh, it was cold? I don't remember now. I think I had a German overcoat. I don't know. Did you have any experiences in which you felt alone or detached from the rest <laughs> of the guys? Bes besides the field incident. Besides the wheat field? No, I guess not. The wheat field, I was alone. And how many days were you there? I, I forgot now. Twelve days total, but alone, I think, four days. Tw you were in a wheat field for 12 days? I think so. Take me through what you would do in a, t a day is a long time. The Germans were all over the place. You so could, you would just lay down? I could kill a German, but I wouldn't be alive. So you were just laying down for 24 hours? That's right. You'd do it too. It's amazing what you do to stay alive. Is this on now? Oh, I'm in trouble. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I was with two other men. But you... S I don't think either one of them are alive. But you stayed down on that, in that... How, how big of an area were we talking about? How big an area? How big was the field? Oh, I would guess uh, about 50 feet. By 50 feet or something. I don't know. That's pretty small. Is it? Well, see, the, the, they would grow their crops there, and they would grow hedgerows. You know what a hedgerow yeah. is? Or all the way around it to keep the wind mm -hmm. and, and so the you, birds and whatever. You were in the middle of all these hedgerows. Yeah. I was lucky because when the Germans came, they just shot into those hedgerows figuring we would be in there, and we weren't. And that's where I would have been if they, but they came too fast. Or I'd have been in there in those hedgerows, you betcha. And they'd have killed me. But they came too quick, so we hit the dirt. Is this on now? Am I being recorded? I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm glad we won the war, though. You helped win it. I did? I didn't do anything. <laughs> what were some of your most unusual experiences? Most unusual experiences? Boy, there's a lot of them, but I can't think of them now. Uh, I guess... A couple of my buddies after D-Day were together in that wheat field somewhere. And uh, I found them. And one of them was doing something real silly and I couldn't help but laugh in the middle of a war. You know, I didn't laugh out loud, but. Do you think about your war days often? No. Not at all? No, I try to forget them. Bet you. War is hell. It's no fun. Tell me, what was your specific role? My specific what? Role. Role in the war, what to do? Well, I was a demolition man. You know what that is? Tell me. Well, a demolition man takes dynamite and blows bridges up and trains and planes and... Whatever you can. Where'd you get all your demolition from? We jumped with it. What if you needed more? I had it wrapped around my legs. Dynamite. Yeah. And I had the, the things that blow the dynamite up, up here with, in cotton. 
because they're delicate. When you were fighting the war, did you realize at the time that this is the world that was going to save humanity? I mean, did it seem that important at the time? At the time we were fighting, all, all, all we did is try and stay alive. I really didn't think of those things then. Mm. When, when they're chasing you to kill you, you just want to stay alive. Five by five and still alive. Do that. Let's see what that is. T tell me, um, what was it like to see all the destruction done to the cities? What was it like to see? It was horrible to see what the bombings did to, to the houses and the, and the citizens, and it was horrible. War is just horrible, horrible. Did you interact with any of the civilians? Hello? Did you interact with any of the civilians? Did I talk to the civilians? Did you interact with any of them overseas? I don't understand what you said. Did you interact with any of the civilians? In, in England, yeah. I meant like in France or in, in Italy. Oh yeah, in France. Uh, uh, there was a little kid that picked me up and took me home eventually to his parents. Yeah. Was there anything that you would do for good luck before you would go into combat? Uh, something superstitious, you mean? I don't remember anything like that. Were you religious back then? Religious? Uh, Paquito, a little bit. Now? Now? Uh, Paquito, a little bit. <laughs> Talk to me about the living conditions overseas. During the war. Uh, it depends on what country you're talking about. They're all a little different. Tell uh, me. England. Oh, but I meant combat. So like Italy, oh, France, Belgium, oh, Italy, Germany. France. Well, uh, they all had trouble getting milk and good water and and uh, food, although they had cattle that they could kill and, and they, they had uh, meat, you know. So they were, they were pretty well off, yeah. But did you live in pup tents or in foxholes? Did I what? Live in pup tents or foxholes? I lived in a foxhole. You know what that is? Yeah. They dig a dig a hole in the ground and get in it. And then if they start shelling you, you've got a chance because the shells hit and go like this. And if you're under the ground, you got a better chance not to be hit. So we would dig a hole wherever we went. What do you remember about the German artillery? They were awful and they were accurate. And you could hear those babies shoot, and as soon as you heard the gun, you hit the ground and, and tried to hide, you know, because of the shrapnel from whatever they were shooting at. Sure, they, their, their guns were unbelievably. And the Germans knew how to fight. We didn't know how to fight. We come to a hill. And instead of going around the hill, which they had all zeroed in, you know what zeroed in means, we went over it. They didn't expect anybody to go over the hill, they expected to go around it. And they had everything zeroed in on both sides around it. And we went over the hill. We didn't know how to fight. If we knew how to fight, they'd have killed us. <laughs> Were there any other instances that you thought you might not make it? <clears throat> well, being buried alive was, was one of them. And I guess in the wheat field was one of them. Anything else? And uh, no, but I've been on patrols and shot at and, you know. Tell me about that. What do you want to know? 
Well, we, we were told to go down the train tracks, and we went down the train tracks, and we got to a certain point, and they started shooting at us. And we just dove uh, one way or the other, you know. Didn't want to be out in the middle on a train track. Rather be on the side, have a little shelter. Uh, war is no fun at all. They're trying to kill you. We're trying to kill them. It's terrible war. No fun at all. Yep, I don't recommend it. You got to remember, I jumped with 48 men, three plane loads. Four came back out of the 48. Two were with me. The commanding officer was the other one. No, we were lucky. Did you receive any medals or citations? I think I did, but I don't know where they are. Did you ever get wounded? Yeah, I got a Purple Heart. That's nothing. Everybody got one of those when they got wounded, and everybody got wounded. Yeah, I got a Purple Heart, yeah. They were common, Purple Hearts. Where we were, you know. <laughs> How did you hear about Roosevelt's death? I think I was on the train going to San Diego. No, no, President Roosevelt, his huh? death. Roosevelt's death. In 45. In 45. Well, we're going backwards now, huh? No, we're going forward. I was in, in combat, wasn't I? Yeah. I don't remember. How did you hear about the war ending? I mean, do you remember that? Damn right. I was in France. And boy, did we celebrate. We danced in the street, and the French girls came out and danced with us in some little town I was in. I don't remember where. St. Mary Galice was on the coast, I think. Anyway, the French were, were, you know, they were allies. They tried to help us. When did you return home? That's a good question. I thought I'd never forget. Uh, 1946, was it? Even though you, you were overseas for a long time, it took them that long to get you home? I don't remember what date I got home. I, I thought I'd remember everything, but I forget it. That's fine. Do you, do you remember what you did when you came home, the first thing you did, or the first person you saw? Oh, my mother and my brothers. All of them made it. Yeah. And, huh? All of your brothers made it alive? Uh, yeah. They all made it. My brother Joe was in stationed in Catalina Island. Oh. And Jerry was a signalman, and he was in London. He was in charge of the, the teletype room. And my brother Gene, he went all over, but he came back. Gene, he, he was in a secret service, I think. Was it easy for you to readjust to civilian life? I haven't yet. What do you mean by that? I haven't adjusted yet. I have to adjust to civil. I haven't adjusted yet. I'll, I hope I settle down someday. It's up here, mental. What, like the war? Yeah. You still think about it? You can't forget it. You don't forget certain frightening things like that. You, just, you try to forget it, and I do forget most of it. But it's there. You, you still got it. But so, you never talked about it when you came home. I didn't want to. I didn't talk about it. I didn't want anybody to hear about that stuff. 
And I didn't want to talk about it because it was, it would frighten me, I guess. I, I, was, I was not normal when I came back. What do you mean by that? Up here I was mixed up. But isn't that just a normal human reaction to seeing the things that you have to see? Say that again. Wait a minute. Okay. You, you're telling me you're all mixed up in the head. But in I'm the, saying, I mixed up where? In the head. Oh, in the head. But I'm saying that's just a normal human reaction to seeing what you had to see. Yeah. Right? I guess so. So aren't you normal then? You are. Yeah. I'll be normal in no time. You are normal. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. You are? Yeah. But we won the war. The Germans knew how to fight. We didn't. You just said some very interesting things. You know, it was a... Uh, you just didn't want to talk about it when you came home. Yeah. Did I tell you, like, there's a big hill... And the Germans thought you were going to go around. Yeah. yeah. We went over the thing. <laughs> they were surprised. Because we didn't know how to fight. It was a phenomena. Did you have nightmares after the war? Very seldom. I have a few. But very seldom. I used to have more. Yeah, that's what, right after the war. Oh, yeah, after the war I had them. I'd jump about two feet while I was sleeping and wake up. I used to dream that I was in a, a foxhole, sleeping in a foxhole. The Germans got a bayonet he's going to stick in my belly. <laughs> that was my nightmare. It was my bad dream. Mm. Yeah, because we would fall asleep in a foxhole. You get so tired, you, you just fall asleep. What is that f like falling asleep in a combat zone? It's like uh, there's so much danger around you and you're putting your guard down. You get so tired. You want to rest. And when you rest, you fall asleep. How do you usually wake up? Someone wakes you up or you wake yourself no, you up? you wake up. And there's a lot of noise, you know. But uh, sleep was one of the things you, you didn't get and you needed it. You go days and nights without sleeping, you get awful tired, you know. Is this thing on all the time? Oh, I'm in trouble. No, you're doing good. Oh, <laughs> I didn't have my teeth. Well, they look good. Those are your original teeth? Yeah, I got, I got some missing here. I got to find them. They're here somewhere. <laughs> wow. Well, it's very nice of you to come and interview me. It's very nice of you to save the world. I didn't save the world. What are you I, talking about? I was another soldier. Yeah, but, but only a very few amount of soldiers saw combat. And an even fewer amount of them saw it on the ground face to face like you. Well, you guys, par paratroopers jumped you, right in the middle of it. You guys saved the world. I saved it, huh? Now what are we going to do with it? It's up to you. Um, i got to find my teeth. What are some life lessons that you learned from your time in the military? Say that slowly. What are some life lessons you life, learned from life your, lesson? You learned from your time in the military. I don't know. Keep your mouth shut. I, I, I learned a lot of things in the military, but I can't bullseye them right now. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of things I learned. What was the happiest day in your life? Uh, the day I was born. Besides that day? Happiest day of my life. 
Oh, I, I guess when the war was over, I guess that was a big thrill for us. What would you like to say to all those who died in the Second World War? Second World War is this one that I was in. What would you like to say to all those who died in it? Your buddies. I, I, I would be speechless. I don't know what I'd say except that I miss them. I loved them. Faith, faith, fate. Fate, I don't know what it is, but some got killed and some didn't. <clears throat> what messages and life advice would you like to leave for future generations? Mind your mother and your father. What wisdom would you impart onto me? What would I pass on to you? What wisdom would you impart onto me? I, I can't get what you want. What wisdom? Wisdom. Would you put onto me? Uh, I guess keep your mouth shut and uh, mind your own business and uh, take good care of your mate and your children and enjoy life. Life is most important. How do you want to be remembered, Mr. Gawk? Just one of the guys. That's all. I, I, if somebody wants to remember me, I'm just one of the guys. That's all. I don't, I don't need to be remembered. I'm not a hero. I'm alive. Five by five and still alive. Is there anything that you would like to add to the interview? Anything I'd like to add to, to this interview? Uh, I think you did a very thorough job and I want to thank you for being most kind. Thank you for your service. All right. This is Denton and this is Wally. And what happened to them? They got killed in the war. And they were your best friends? I, I, my buddies, we were close. I had to visit a grave uh, where they were buried. And, and I love those guys. They were so great. 